Um, we're in the last week of our uh, talking about relationships here. And I uh, want to just remind you, uh, 2018, really, we really feel like God has told us prophetically that he, this is the day of God's favor. That we've lived so much in our lives about the future and planning and goals, which are all fine. But God wants to do something today in our lives. And I, and I, I don't want to wait for God to do something. I want to experience him now in, in his fullness, in his love, and his mercy. And I want the fullness of what God wants in my relationships today. Right? I want it now. Right? Like the Queen song. Um, so, I'll wake up you got that. That's okay. That's okay. You'll look it up this week. It's amazing. Um, so, we're going to talk a little bit about how do we build durable relationships. And the way that we build durable friendships and marriages and relationships with our fa- friends and family is by fighting for the things that really matter most. Right? We fight about everything, but do we fight for the things that matter most? Okay? So, we're going to do a little recap now. I got cinder blocks. I'm going to break with my head right now. Are you ready for this? Just kidding. (laughs) So this is what we talked about. Because I I like to look at um, relationships as ways it's it's built. Like think about the friendships and the the most important relationships you have right now. They're built over time, right? They're built. They're not just like all of a sudden you're like, oh, we're best friends. Do we just become best friends? You know, that type of thing. (laughs) So the basis of all of our relationships is serving. If we come into a relationship wondering what we can get out of it, or if I'm going to get poured into, or if what, well, how is this going to help me? We're already doing it wrong. It's not Jesus, right? That's the culture. That's just selfishness to some degree, right? Every relationship we want to come into as followers of Jesus, we come with the attitude of service. In this relationship, how can I serve this person? How can I love them like Jesus does? How can I show them Christ's love and Christ came to serve? Right? And that's like so contrary sometimes. And the beauty of relationships is when I serve someone like Christ does, and then they serve me like Christ does, then, oh man, we're in business, right? Then that relationship can grow. So the, the cornerstone, the centerpiece is serving. Just like in all of our lives, the center, the, the rock, the cornerstone of, should be Christ. Everything that we do and say and who we are comes through our love and life with Jesus, right? Same thing with relationships. Starts with serving. Okay? Can you read that? Kind of. Jill wrote it. Looks great. <laughs> All right. Then we talked about how relationships take time. And relationships have to do revolve around, first of all, with we enjoy each other. We like to have fun. Right? Jesus was, was called a drunkard and a glutton. Why? Because he was a drunkard and glutton? No but because he liked to enjoy himself. He liked to be with the people he loved and have a blast. And there was consistency, and there was time, and there was enjoyment, and relationships take time, okay? Some people are like open books. You can like get to know someone right away, and it's like, oh, it took like five times hanging out, and we were great friends. Some people, it takes a long time, but time is a huge thing. We can't expect the relationship to be super deep in the first week, right? You can't expect this, because there's all sorts of things that we have to walk through. We have to serve each other first. We're building trust. It takes time. Okay? Remember that? Talk about that? Talk about having fun? I like having fun. My poor wife. (laughs) Okay, next, we talked about vulnerability. And vulnerability is authenticity and risk. It means that I'm able to be my true self in front of you, and you can be that with me. And then I start to risk who I really am with you, what I really think, my deepest thoughts, my, my, my questions about life, my concerns, the things I struggle with. It's about authenticity and risk. Okay? You'll never grow a relationship unless you're authentic and unless you risk. Unless you, okay, this is what I think. It might be unpopular, but here we go, right? That's hugely important to the foundation of what we do in our relationship. So we serve like Christ does. It takes time, consistency, enjoyment, time together, right? A place, we we talked about how community happens in circles, right? Around tables. And then around those tables, we're vulnerable. We show our true self, and we risk who we really are, okay? Scary. Anybody? Scary? Not anymore. (laughs) Okay? All right, when... You risk well. When you risk with someone, and they steward that risk well, when they care about that risk, when they ask questions, when they love well, when they re- respond well, if I risk and someone responds poorly, that's tough, right? When you steward the risk well, 
and this is, it, you, you build a little bit of investment, and you build trust. And you're able to broaden that relationship and deepen, the, deepen that relationship. You're able to be more like Jesus in front of them, be them more like yourself in front of them, because it's just, it's safer, right? Trust builds safety. And when I'm safe in a relationship, sometimes it's like, I can say really anything, and it's going to be okay, right? Within reason. <laughs> okay? So we build off of serving and off of time and off of vulnerability, we build trust. Okay? Trust is built over time, but broken like this, Right? And God doesn't call us to trust everyone. He calls us to love everyone. But in the depths of your relationship, it requires trust. Okay? How are we doing? Good. Is this awkward, me walking back and forth? <laughs> we'll deal with it. All right. Last week, we talked about conflict. When you've built trust, my OCD is going to kick in. Is that pretty good? Oh, my gosh. I should have put a mark on it. Last week we talked about conflict. We talked about how when we have trust, all of a sudden we're going to hit this wall. It's called conflict. And God has most of his blessings in our relationship on the other side of the conflict. Right? And while we, at times, avoid conflict like the plague, because we think if I have conflict with this, all this is going to fall. The reality is, if you build a relationship and you have a little conflict, there's already a foundation here, the foundation of Christ. It's like in my life with Jesus. If I have conflict with Jesus, which is my fault generally, um, all the time, um, <laughs> I don't have to worry about him deserting me. I don't have to worry about him being like, well, pff, I don't have to worry about that because his heart is to serve me, to love me. So we talked about when we have trust, there's this thing that happens called commitment. And when you're committed to one another in love. And you can get through anything together, right? You can get through hell together. You can get through good times and bad times, you know? We were were out in Glenwood Springs, and some neighbors were there. We had dinner with them. We were joking about, they've been married 20 years. I'm like, wow, 20 years of marital marital bliss, I said. And they both looked at each other and just laughed, which was so funny. (laughs) Because that's like marriage, really, mostly just yelling, laughing at each other, just laughing at each other. And they're like, man, and the thing they said was, there was, there's been some ups and some downs, right? And the beauty of our marriages and our friendships, when there's commitment, it's that no matter what will come, we're committed to each other, right? Again, commitment's a two-sided road, not just one person. One person committed, one person's not. It's difficult, okay? So this is how we build healthy, durable relationships, through serving like Christ would. It takes time, it takes commitment, connection. It takes vulnerability, it takes trust, it takes commitment. Okay? So these are just principles, right? We all know these things if we read any book by any relationship person ever. These are kind of like foundational things, okay? Something that God's been hitting me on this week, which you get to hear about because I have a microphone, (laughs) is am I present? Am I present? Am I available? In my relationships, I know all the principles. I got to serve. I got to take time. But am I carving out time in my life for these things to happen? I don't know about you, but in my life, it is kind of full at times. And at times I get home and it's been a long day and people make me frustrated, so it's better to say nothing. And the thing I struggle with is not necessarily these things, but it's this right here. Do I still have a little time? Do I still have a little bit of intention with my kids? Do I still have time and intention with my wife? Am I going to make time and intention with the people who I love? Not, we can make time for people, right? Early in our marriage, we struggled because we had no time. And there's a struggle of time, right? Anyone else struggle with time? We got no time. This is bad. And we find ourselves, when we had time, stressed out that we didn't have time. Right? We're like, oh, we don't have any time. We're going to talk about it for two hours. That's all the time we had. Shoot. You know? <laughs> We're done. And, G- and what we realized is we, it wasn't about the quantity of our time. It was about the quality of our time. Right? It was about, I can spend 50 hours with you, but if I'm not present, if I'm not intentional, if I'm not available, these things will not happen. I can spend 45 minutes 15 minutes with someone available, intentional, personal. And these things can build like crazy, right? 
In our culture, we're so focused on, our, on everything that's going on in our world, our phones, our social media, what's going on in the news, what's happening, what's the next thing I gotta do, what's the next sporting event we gotta get our kids to, again, do I do all these things, that I forget sometimes to be, just be present. I forget sometimes that it takes time of intention where I can grow in depth with these things. Cool? That makes sense? Anyone convicted? This guy. <laughs> I think, I think, in seasons of life, there's seasons of life where we struggle with this less and we struggle with this more. Anybody? Like, there's certain seasons I'm like, man, I'm the best dad. <laughs> Gosh, so I should, like, take videos and post them about how good a dad I am. <laughs> Just play with my kids on the floor. You know, taking for bike rides, doing these things, talking about real issues. And then there's seasons where it's like, go play. <laughs> I can't right now. That's life. That's life, right? So I think there's two, two uh, sides of this, okay? I don't think it's healthy to be always just like, oh, present. Right? I, I, we, there's a thing in this culture where parents worship their kids. Have you ever seen that? It's like, oh, are you okay? Did something happen? Are you feeling good about everything right now? When I was a kid, it was like, do you feel bad? We'll go outside and figure it out, you know? It was like, <laughs> you got a stomach ache? Well, here's a, here's a mint. Go figure it out, you know? Go sit <laughs> in the toilet. That's what I said. My mom, no matter what it was, go sit in the toilet. <laughs> That's way too much. I'm sorry. So there's this culture of, like, where we just, like, every second has to be, like, totally planned and, like, oh, like, when you first start dating, oh, my gosh. Every day it was just like this like perfect thing. You know, like, oh, I gave her candy and flowers, and we went to, went to dinner at this spec expensive restaurant I couldn't afford. Then we went and sat and we'll watch the sun go down. And now when we go on dates, it's like, we got a gift card here? We got a gift card for this place? And <laughs> we got to go to Target, right? Okay, great. That's our <laughs> day night, right? So I don't think that we have to always be engaged with people. I think it's unnatural. I think it's unrealistic, okay? In certain seasons of your life, you might be able to be just like, oh, every moment I'm just like, oh. In reality of life, I don't think that's how it rolls. Anybody else? So how do we, in a busy culture, and if you're in a season of your life where you can just be like totally focused and present and, and every, every moment you have with your kids is just like really dynamic and great, praise the Lord and teach me how to do it. But if you're in a season of your life where like, man, I'm like getting home and I'm shot, or I'm, I, I don't know if I have any more space to invest in anyone else. Or I don't know if, I, if I've made any type of concerted effort to connect to anyone. If that's, if that's the case, I think we could work together on that. Okay? Ephesians 5 says this. Look carefully, then how you walk. Okay? This is the walk of your life. This is the way you live your life. Not as the unwise, but of wise. Making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Okay, this isn't like, oh, everything around you ev is evil. Make sure you don't mess anything up or else we're all toast, right? It's not, it's not that extreme, but it's understanding like unwise living allows evil and allows a life that you don't want to seep in, right? Trust me. Unwise living outside the, the service of Christ in my life will lead to all sorts of goofiness. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So how do we be present? First thing we're going to do is talk about how do we be present with others. I got three areas that you might not all fit in, but um, these are kind of the main areas of relationships. Our friends, our spouse, and our kids. So you might not have a spouse yet. That's great. Um, look around. Find one today. Um, <laughs> you might not have kids. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> it's another service. All right, so your friendships. How do we in our friendships build this? And how do we take time? Because so much of our um, time with my friends is just like having fun, watching sports, hanging out, right? Which is great. That's important. It's one of the things we do, right? But how do, we, how do I take time in my friendships to go deeper and wider, to build a depth and consistency of our relationship together? How do we do that? Okay? So friendships. Greater love has no one than this, 
that someone that would lay his life for his friends. We talked about that verse. Jesus says, this is the greatest way we show love, to lay our life down. So with our friendships, what are some things we can do? One of, so I'm going to give you some time. There's a thing on your, on your uh, t- seat there. They're getting more comfortable every week. Okay, guys, just steal. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to give you some time to, to think about this. How in your relationships, in your friendships, are you going to be able to build a little bit more depth? How in your friendships are you going to be more intentional with the time you have to build a little bit more uh, grit, a little more commitment, a little more trust? It doesn't happen accidentally, okay? So a couple things I've, I've thought of is trying to, when we're out with our friends, not have our phones, okay? Have them in our pocket. We did it one time, I was in a guy's group, and we put our phones on the table and stacked them on top, and whoever touched the, t- the phone first had to pay, which was awesome, because I had self-control then. <laughs> Others didn't, okay? So we're not going to have our phones, in, or, or I'm going to try to take uh, once a week or once a month, I'm going to try to meet someone new and spend time with someone and get to know someone a little deeper than I know them now. Okay, this is not something just the pastor can do, this is something you can do. Or I'm gonna, I've, there's been someone I've been meaning to get together with. I'm going to get together and just like ask some questions about life. Or, or um, maybe they, they, they do this nonprofit thing or they do races. And I'm going to ask them about that just to get to know them. Like how in your life are you going to be more, have a concerted effort towards building depth in your friendships? Okay, single people, this is really important. You'll never know who you want to marry until you know who you want to be friends with. Right? You'll never know who you want to marry until you know who you really want to be friends with. Because attraction is just the beginning, right? Attraction is just attraction. You're going to be attracted to people your whole life. That's the way it works, right? The way God made us, to be attracted to each other for, other, for diff- a, a myriad of reasons. But how are you going to build depth of friendship with people as a single person? Or as married people who are, you know, for me with other guys, how am I going to get past the dude awkwardness stage of, our, of a friendship, right? How are we going to do that? takes something a little bit more planned, a little more, more precise than just like showing up and figuring it out. Because you can, you'd be surprised how many football games you can watch with someone and know nothing that's going on in their life. Like 500, just so you know. <laughs> so we're going to take some time in a second. So start thinking about that. I'm going to give you some time in your life. So the, the invitation of God's favor for you is to open the door. God will never open the door for you and then kick you in, right? He says, hey, all this is here for you. You feel alone, you feel isolated. If you do these things, I'm going to give you a connection you've never felt. I'm going to give you friendships you've never had. I'm going to give you community that you've always wanted, but you've never been able to define. But it's not up to me, it's not up to your neighbor, it's not up to your friend, it's up to you. If I want the... the, a community of men who love Jesus and who can help me build my character and link arms with me to help reach this world, then I have to take and do my part in that. Okay? Next, with your spouse. This is the hardest one, I think. Or this is not the hardest one, but I think it's the one that goes by the wayside the most quickly. Ephesians 5, you should read the whole, this whole verse, the whole chapter. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And then it says, wives, love your husbands. And there's a lot of depth in there, so read it. And then read it again. Don't get mad. It'll be fine. Um, so do you realize in your, in your marriage, in your family, the most important relationship is not your kids? The most important relationship is your spouse. Right? And if you focus all your time, all your attention, all your energy around these little kids who when they're 18, they're going to leave anyway and forget about you. <laughs> Just kidding. The most important relationship in your home is your sp- relationship with Jesus and the relationship with your spouse. And the more you sow in and are present and you build that relationship, the healthier and better your family will be and the happier and more fulfilled your children will be, not even for today, but for the rest of their lives. Because you will have modeled them Christ's relationship with his church, which is us. The reason for marriage is not so that we can just finally get married, it's going to be great, right? The reason for marriage is it shows us God's commitment to us. 
I, it's like I could, I could only go as deep as I could, and I, I needed marriage to get me more connected to Jesus. It shows Christ's love for his church and the mutual serving and selflessness of, one, of living th- with someone and doing life together, and it's not easy. It's the way you learn about Jesus' love the most in a relationship. I mean, you can learn a lot about his love and his, in lots of things, but in relationship, your marriage, the goal of it is not just so that you're fulfilled. Fulfillment is a byproduct. The goal of my marriage is that I learn how Jesus loves me and I learn to love others like Jesus better. Because I can put on a great show for everybody, but not for her. Trust me. (laughs) So how in your life are you going to focus your relationship, your time, to be present, to be intentional, to go through these things with your spouse? Like, one thing that we try to do, I'm trying to do, is when we go on dates, we try not to talk about the kids the whole time. Because what happens when you have time together? Oh, Ella did this, and Clara did that, and Isaac's, I think, is this, and this is happening, it's like two hours of that. I'm like, okay, wow, that was so romantic. That's great. <laughs> you know? It's hard, isn't it? How, what if, I heard a pastor say this one time, and I'm not great at this, I'm learning, what if, we, what if we took time and said, hey, what is going on in your heart? What is God showing you? What have you been reading? What's God revealing to you? How do you think that we could love people better together? How do you think we could serve Jesus better together? How could I serve you better? I, heard, I had someone say, ask me, how do, you, how do I love my wife better? And I said, well, probably should ask her. Should ask her. Well, how could I love you better? You know? I think this is the hardest thing. And I think, sadly, so many, so many times, um, when this goes, so, so much in our culture goes, right? As marriages fail, so much in families fail, you know? Like, you, you hear all these crazy things are happening with people. You're like, man, what would have happened if they had a strong mom and dad around them? What would have happened if they had a group of people that loved them better, right? How do we be present? And then with our kids. Proverbs 22, 6. Start children off on the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not turn from it. I think we think this verse means make sure they know everything about the Bible so that when they're older, they won't screw it up. Or they won't... It's, it, it, we're teaching the Bible, right? That's, that's the basis of what we teach them. It says, help start your kids off in the way they should go. It's our jobs as parents to show help see through the eyes of Christ of who God has created them to be, each one individually. And each one of kids are way different. If I try to show them this is how you're supposed to do it, it might not work for one kid as it does with the other. I mean, truth and, and things, the principles of the kingdom, yes, teach them that, absolutely. But raise them in the way they should go. How are each of your children wired? How do they think? How did God create them? And it's our jobs, I think, as parents, to help pull that out of them. Because the culture tries to conform them. And I want my kids to be 1,000% who Jesus called them to be. Raise them in the way they should go. And then when they're older, they won't turn from it because that's who they will be. That's who they'll be. And then they'll want to come and hang out with me after they leave, I hope. I pray. Okay, are we doing okay? Okay, so how do we be present? You guys want to come? I'm going to give you some time to think and pray and write and put a plan together, okay? It says, without a vision, the people perish, right? Take your, take your vision. Well, how are you going to build the friendships? Well, how are you going to take time? Pick one thing. You know, if you struggle, and what area do you do struggle? Man, I suck at this. I suck at being vulnerable. Because I'm scared once people see me for real, it's over. So maybe you say, I'm going to have a vulnerable conversation with someone once a week, right? Specific and measurable. Then you can look at it and be like, did I do that? No, I didn't. Okay, I'm not going to build this if I don't do that. With your spouse, or let's say you're, you're with someone you're dating, are we talking about things that are, that are bigger and deeper than what's going on in our present? Are we, are we working through things that, are we not avoiding things? 
Are we going to have a, are we going to do a, a meeting, a business meeting every week to deal with the business? And then we're going to do a dream meeting or a meeting where we just like, what's going on in your heart? If you did that, I, I know very few people that do that in their marriage. They work budgets, they do schedules. They might pray together before they go to bed. But are you saying, like, what's God saying to you? Who are we going to be? The reason why we ended up here today is because we had a dream meeting one time in the middle of the winter in North Dakota. What's God saying to us? What could the next season of our life become? And God did a good work. With, our ki- with your kids, how are you going to help them understand who they are in Christ? Teach them the word of God. Teach them how, how they think and how, and how we see things as good and, and normal. How are you going to do that? Is it date night? Me and my son, we, we started having the talk. Huh? We'll talk about that another time. We went and hiked and had the talk. And it was awesome. And we laughed so hard because I'm a goofball. And, we, and, and it was so cool just to hear his heart and to hear the questions he had. And we just talked about, it got to be way broader into how does God see us as people. But without that space, we would never have had it. So, how do we do that? This is not a condemning thing. This is a, man, how do I just carve out a little time? Maybe would say, I'm going to take an hour a week with each kid, or a half hour a week with each kid, and we're just going to talk about something deeper. Or like, where, wh- one thing we do at supper, we have no phones at supper, thank God for my wife. Um, and we always go around the table, and we say, what was the best part of your day? What was the best part of your day today? And Ella always says, eating with her family, which is cute. But it gives time just to do something beyond homework and next sporting event and what's on our social media. What do we have to go into next? It's important. So take a couple times. Take a couple of minutes here. They're going to sing this song. And just with your friendships or your spouse or your kids, pick one area of your life that you want to focus in on. One time of your week where you're going to be present or two or three or four, whatever you got to do. But this is time and space to hear from God. So Lord, I pray that you would speak now. You would show us, Lord, how we are to be present in the relationships that matter most to us. God, give us specifics. Give us ideas. Give us plans in the name of Jesus. So take a couple minutes. You can write it down on those pieces of paper as we sing. So you guys come up with anything? Do you want to hear mine? That's what I'm going to work on. Pray for me. I want to try to have time with each kid by themselves. Because if you have more kids, that's hard. Because the other kids are annoying. <laughs> During that time. Just kidding. One of the things that I struggle with is uh, we put all of our effort into our days and we put all our efforts in our kids and then we get our kids to bed and then we're just like, done. Right? And so I want to try to give uh, some time just for us before we watch whatever comedian we're going to watch or watch our shows or go do our things. I want to try to do that. And last thing, I want to try to ask better questions in my friendships. You know that asking questions, asking someone a good question can like send on a, send your conversation all over the world, right? I'm going to ask, try to ask better questions. I'd encourage you, you try, you add a couple things to your day, your week, your month. Maybe you just take, hey, once a week, we're going to have like date night at home or we're going to talk about things or once every two weeks, whatever works for your life. Or you start implementing these things in your life, you're going to see the depth and width of your relationships grow in advance. It's going to happen. And it's like with anything with, the, with God, you just, you just like take a step forward and God will just unfold the good things. Last part, I'm going to give you time. The most important relationship in our lives is our relationship with Jesus. And the most important person to be present with is our Savior. And like I said a couple weeks ago, we stall in our growth here because we stall in our growth with the Lord. We don't know, we're afraid, and we're insecure about having a relationship depth with Jesus or being our true self with him because he knows what I did. He knows where I've been. He knows how I've messed up. But do you know that it starts with him for serving too? 
back to the guy who said, hey, I don't know how to love, love my wife. Oh, I said, ask her. But then Jesus says, remember, a new command I give to you, love one another as I have loved you. If we do not know how Jesus loves us, we will not know how to love other people well. Amen to that? Like, if I, if I do not know, how does Jesus really see me? How does he love me? How, does, how is he there for me? How is he present in, in his time with me? How am I going to know how to do that with other people? It'll be a filter. It'll be filtered by the way I grew up. It'll be something I read, something I saw. But I can have access to that with my relationship with Jesus. Because he wants to be present. He wants to be connected. He wants to have time with me and time with you that goes deeper than I checked off my list of my things that I do for him. Right? It's that I get to meet with him. And the only way I'll have the marriage I want is if I understand the way Jesus loves me. Unconditionally. That when he looks at me, he doesn't see all the things I did or how I screwed up. He just sees his friend, his brother, the one that he died for. And the joy that fills his heart and the smile on his face is how I am welcomed each and every time. Do you realize that? That when you encounter, when you come into Jesus' presence, when you in, are there with him, there's not a skull or there's not a... Uh, well, we're going to have to figure this out. There's a smile on his face to see you. There's a joy in his heart that this is my brother or my sister. And until we experience that, this is way, way harder. Right? It's way harder. Until I know that when I see God and God sees me, he's not disappointed. He's not... He's not ashamed. He's not like, well, I kind of messed up with you, but we'll be okay. We'll make this work. That he is overjoyed. If I could have, my prayer is that God, when you would encounter him, that you would see the smile on his face for you. That you would feel his love and his heart to say, what can I do for you? I want to serve you. Jesus says, when he talks about prayer, he says, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who does what is seen in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, and this is huge, don't keep babbling on like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask. Do you realize our time with God, our prayer life, should be a lot more of this sometimes? If there's times we, we intercede and we contend for things, we ask God for things consistently, we pray, God, do this work, pray for Easter, pray for my invites, pray for my own heart, God, help me with this thing. But then so much about our time with God is not this, is not this thing where I check off my list, but it's this time where I come and I listen. Jesus doesn't say, he says, don't be like the hypocrites who go out and, the, and show how much they've done, Right? Close the door. Get away with the Lord. Be with him. Be intentional. Be present with him. However you have to do that. It doesn't mean you have to find a closet to sit in dark. Don't do that. But find time with him to be present. You'll never know how to love someone well unless you know the way Jesus loves you. You'll never know how to, be, how to make a marriage work or how to love your kids right or raise your kids right unless you understand the way God our Father sees you as his son and his daughter and he is overjoyed by that. And everything he does is to try to pull out of you the way you are wired and created. How are you going to be present with Jesus? This is not religious. This isn't a check of boxes that we do. We have to understand his word. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, which is like the most beautiful stories ever written of who Jesus was and is and how he interacted with people and how he loved people. Read them. Experience them. Read one story, one verse, whatever. 
learn who Jesus was to people then, and then let the Spirit of God speak to you and who he wants you to be today. Be present with him. And if you can be present with him, you can be present with your spouse and your friends and your kids. So how are you going to do that? How are you going to do it without making it religious? You know? How are you going to make it without making it, you know, oh, I've got to do this, this chore. And sometimes it feels like a chore right away, right? Okay, I've got to read my word. Because I know that the word of God is crucial to my heart. And it shows me how to live, and it shows me how to love. And, and sometimes my flesh doesn't want me to do it, and my schedule doesn't want me to do it, but if I sit and take the moment, oh. What, what, what we shy away from is not the chore of doing our time with him, but we really miss out on the smile on Jesus' face to be with us. So we're going to sing a song. We're going to pray about this. This is huge. How are you going to do that in your life? Maybe you have a great like, life with Jesus. Like It's just this, whew. but I don't know. Or sometimes I just need, like, we, I need something else. Like I go drive a lot, and it's just me and him. You know? I have to come here and crank the most loud, the loud, this is, don't come here if you see my car and the roof shaking. Um, crank it up really loud. The subs sound really good. They're good for the soul. How are we getting present with the Lord? That's the key to everything. So let's pray. Does that make sense? We good with that? Sound like a good plan? Jesus, would you uh, speak to us now? Thank you, Lord, that when we encounter you, there's a smile on your face. That there's an invitation and excitement, and you are, you are you're ready at any moment and any time. God, how do we be more present with you? Not in a series of doing, but in being with you. Not in just checking off the list of things I need to do to be close to you, but actually being close to you, actually experiencing you and encountering you. How do I, in the way you wired me, maybe it's nature, maybe it's time in a coffee shop, maybe it's alone, closed off, maybe it's writing, maybe it's art, whatever it is, Lord, we want to be present with you. We want you to shape the way we love other people. So God, as we sing this song, would you, would you speak to us? Would you whisper in our heart and our ear? how we can connect to you, what, what part of our day, maybe it's 10 minute, dr- 10 minute drive, I turn the radio off and I just spend it with you, maybe it's, maybe it's the verse of the day, maybe it's a devotional, whatever it is, God, we want to see your smiling face. So speak to us now as we sing this, in your name.